Hi folks, this is Shefik. Today we are going to focus on partially homomorphic encryption and its implementation with RSA Albert. But before we begin, please like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to stay up to date with the latest videos. Besides, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. Homomorphic encryption is letting us to make calculations on encrypted data without private key and RSA is partial homomorphic because we are able to make calculations on encrypted data if the operation is multiplication. In other words, RSA is multiplicative homomorphic. Some algorithms could be multiplicative homomorphic such as RSA or LGMAL or some other algorithms could be additive homomorphic. These are called partial homomorphic encryption. On the other hand, nowadays we have fully homomorphic encryption schemas. So if you wonder, you can read this tutorial to understand how facial recognition can be done with fully homomorphic encryption. Let's remember RSA algorithm first. We firstly need to pick two prime numbers, P and Q. Let's say P is equal to 11 and Q is equal to 13. Here we picked two primes. We can control the primes of those numbers with this prime function and this is going to get a number and I'm going to build a for loop for i in range from 2 to n in that way. This is going to check values between 2 and n. Then we are going to check n can be divisible by i without remainder. This can be easily checked like that. n percentage i if this is equal to 0 then this is not a prime number. Return false. If this for loop is run and no item is returned thereafter I can return true value here because it's not terminated for any number. Here I should check the primes of those numbers. This prime P and similarly I'm going to check the primes of Q. They are both prime numbers and doesn't throw an exception but if I set a non-prime number here it's going to return an exception. I'm going to calculate the n and p values. n is going to be p times Q. On the other hand Totient function or short the p is going to be p minus 1 times q minus 1. Let's print both n value and totient n values. Totient value of n is going to be 3. Totient 142 is going to be 120. Totion function actually counts the positive integer numbers that co prime to n. So if you find the numbers from 1 to 142, then you are going to have 120 different numbers that co prime to 142. Here I need to pick a random integer number that co prime to 3 to check a value is co prime to anything. I can use met module of Python and let's say e is going to be 7. I don't know if this is co prime to 3. Let's check it. Met dot greatest common divisor and here I'm going to set e and 3 as input arguments. This should be 1. This returns true. So Number 7 is core prime to phi value, which is 120. I'm going to find the multiplicative inverse value of e for mod phi. This is very easy. After Python 3.8, I'm going to call direct the power function and pass e as first argument, minus 1 as second argument, and phi as third argument. Let's see e and phi couple here. If E and D are multiplicative inverse, thereafter this multiplication should be 1 in mod phi. This is true. I 
can validate this multiplicative inverse calculation here. I'm going to use E as my private K and D as my public K. Now we have our K pairs that they are able to make encryption and decryption. Suppose that the message I would like to encrypt is 99. Thereafter, I'm going to find the ciphertext C with the power function again. And here I'm going to send the message as first argument, my private K E as second argument, and N is going to be the third argument. Let's see what is ciphertext. It's going to be 44. Let's decrypt this ciphertext. I'm going to restore the plain text in p variable and I'm going to call power function again and pass the cipher text as first argument, public key as second argument and n as third argument. Here in both encryption and decryption n is the mod value, e and d are keys and the first arguments are the cipher text and plain text. Let's see can we restore the 99 value yes this must be equal to n this is true so we can encrypt a number with my private ke and decrypt the ciphertext with my public kd now we are able to make encryption and decryption and let's focus on the partially homomorphic encryption with RSA. To encrypt the message and with RSA encryption algorithm, we are going to find the m to the power of e in modulus n. Here e is our private key. Let's encrypt the message pair according to this rule. Encryption of message 1 is going to be message 1 to the power of e in modulus n. Similarly, encrypted version of message 2 is going to be message 2 to the power of e in modulus n. If we multiply the encrypted version of those messages, we are going to multiply the expressions on the right hand side. Message 1 to the power of e times message 2 to the power of e in modulus n. As you can see, this expression has common power so we can put those bases in common parentheses thereafter we are going to have message 1 times message 2 to the power of e in modulus n on the other hand if we multiply the plain message 1 and plain message 2 thereafter encrypt this modification we are going to have same expression message 1 times message 2 to the power of e in modulus n so rsa encryption algorithm is homomorphic with respect to the multiplication because we are going to have same results if we multiply the plain messages then encrypt this multiplication or encrypt messages separately and multiply those encrypted messages i'm going to use two different numbers suppose that the first one is nine and the second one is 11. here i'm going to encrypt both m1 and m2 pair and let's store them in m1 encrypted here i'm going to pass the m1 input as first argument my private key as second argument and mod value n as third argument similarly i'm going to encrypt m2 let's see the content of m1 and m2 let's encrypt the values as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, RSA is multiplicative homomorphic. So if I multiply those encrypted values and find uh, the final value for modem, I'm going to have 44. And interestingly, let's encrypt something else. Instead of M1, let's find M1 times M2. As you can see, this is 44. Two. So if I encrypt this pair M1 and M2, thereafter I'm going to find its multiplication. It's going to be equal to the multiplication of M1 and M2 pair encrypted value. Actually, this line shows RSA as multiplicative homomorphic or RSA as 
partially homomorphic. You don't have to have the plain text values. You can directly multiply the encrypted values and you are going to have the same value when you multiply the plain values then encrypt them. So in this video we have mentioned partially homomorphic encryption and its implementation with RSA algorithm. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.